Uh, Gabby Marina, welcome to Australian Musician and welcome to Australia again. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Uh, I wanted to know a little bit about uh, your background growing up in Guatemala. What, what are your earliest music memories? Earliest memories probably would be um, singing uh, in the living room, uh, just like whatever my mom was listening to at the time. So it was a lot of classical music, like opera singing and um, musicals and Disney songs and things like that. And then later on, I discovered the blues and the jazz um, by accident, really. It was on a family trip that I took to New York um, when I was 13. You have such a, an eclectic music taste. Um, does that come from mum and dad or just your own discoveries? Oh no, that's definitely been my own discoveries because, um, I mean, my, both of my parents are, I mean, they're not really, I wouldn't say, I mean, they're not professional musicians. My mother is actually tone deaf, so she's not um, musical at all. She's a wonderful um, public speaker and she has her own radio show. And she's been on TV and things like that. but. But, but no no musical talent there. Uh, my father, he actually has a really good ear and everything, but he wasn't really, you know, I, I don't know, I guess I didn't really grow up in a musical family, so to speak. Um, and all the other, you know, what, what you're talking about, like the discoveries that I made were really made when I went to LA and I was surrounded by a bunch of other musicians and people that were, you know, just very inspiring to me. Uh, you did some great tours with Tracy Chapman and yeah. Honey DeFranco. Yeah. What do you learn from working with great uh, female artists like that? Well, first of all, it was um, the Tracy Chapman tour was the first time I ever went on tour, um, and that was an incredible experience. Um, you know, it was it was just me and my guitar. I was opening for her just just with a thirty minute set, and. I, at, at that time, I remember just thinking, wow, she was just so incredible. Every show that she was doing, she was giving it 100%, and it didn't matter if she was tired. It didn't matter if she was maybe a little sick. Actually, I got a little sick during that tour, and and, um, and that just sort of like kept, kept me going, and it really inspired me to just want to be a, a better performer. And I mean, she was so incredible. Um, so was Ani DeFranco, of course. Um, and I just felt extremely privileged to be on that stage with such, um, you know, amazing artists and, and you know, strong female uh, musicians. Yeah. Uh, I believe your first professional gig was with Ricky Martin. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. That was um, when I was 10 years old, I opened for him uh, in Guatemala. My dad was uh, an artist promoter, so he would bring um, artists from mainly from Mexico and well, Ricky Martin at the time was living in Puerto Rico and he was so big because he had just come out of a, a famous boy band named Menudo and then he was starting his solo career and so he anyways he came to Guatemala and I opened for him that was a big deal. Uh, another oh you did a couple of tours with Hugh Laurie the uh, yes. actor musician that uh, yeah. what are your memories of that must have been some funny moments? Oh man it, there was never a dull moment on that tour it was just uh, just being around him was just was incredible. He's just such a funny guy, on and off stage. Um, it really, every show, even though sometimes he would just say the same jokes every night, I, I still crank up. It would still be funny as hell to me. Um, he's amazing. He's an incredible human being, so generous. He would um, give us, give each one of us, uh, of the musicians in the band, our own time to shine on stage. Um, that's very rare to see from, you know, um, a, a, a leader, right? A, a, a front man. Uh, you, I believe you co-wrote the uh, the theme to Parks and Recreation. It's one of my favorite TV shows. Oh my goodness, really? That's amazing. One of my favorite TV shows too. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was that was really crazy. Um, I was asked to write a thirty-second instrumental for this new show that was that was about to premiere and. Um, I had heard that this same um, email, ad, you know, basically asking for for a theme song, had gone out to like 200 other composers, and so I had no idea, you know, and honestly thought it was such a long shot that I would ever get something like that. I had never done anything for television before, and I have never done anything for television after that. I mean, like like a theme song for you know for a show. So. So that was kind of a, you know, a lucky strike, and I'm just so glad they chose it. It's 
I love that show. Uh, was there a longer version of the song, or you just stuck to the thirty seconds? No, it was it was really just thirty seconds, um, and that's what I gave them, and and that's what they they ended up using. Actually, I think on the show now they only use maybe twenty seconds. Like they reduced. We had like we have a, a second part to the song, and they got rid of that. And now they only use the first part. Of it. On the first few episodes, you can hear the entire thirty second theme. Yeah. Uh, the last time I saw you was in 2017 at the Wilton, uh, at the Bowie yeah. uh, celebration. Yeah. How did you come to be involved in that? So a few weeks after Bowie passed, there was a, a tribute show that was put together by a friend of mine in LA, and he sort of gathered this whole community of you know musicians from Los Angeles and. And uh, and it became this thing. It was it was like it started with just like oh it's just like ten musicians, and then ended up being like forty musicians on stage, like you know ten different drummers and twenty different singers. And Seal ended up coming to, to sing some songs. Um, and then Mike Garson heard about it because um, Holly Palmer, who used to be Bowie's backup singer, uh, is a friend of, of of this this guy that I told you that put put it together. And she called everybody, you know, from from Bowie's band, and they all sort of be came to to play on that show, and then it became this bigger thing that none of us ever imagined that it would go where where it went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I've seen photos of you with some really interesting looking guitars. Um, okay. What are you using on this tour? On this tour, I just brought my uh, a Duesenberg. Um, I got it in Germany um, a couple of years ago, and it's. It's my favorite guitar right now. It's an electric guitar, yeah. Yeah, and the acoustic that you're using? The acoustic that I'm using, well, I, I use an, a Gibson LG2, um, but on on this particular tour, I only brought my electric, but on uh, tonight, my first show uh, here in Melbourne, I'm going to be using a friend of mine's um, acoustic guitar, which I don't really know what it is, so I'm sorry, but it sounds beautiful. It's an island string guitar, so yeah. Yeah. Um, do you generally write on guitar? Um, yes, I would say 90% of the time it's on guitar. Yeah. So. Um, your current album is Illusion mm -hmm. uh, from 2016, which I believe was uh, done all analog, no computers yeah. involved at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was that experience like? Um, well, it was, you know, nerve wracking. I was I was with the musicians in one room, and we all were just playing and singing at the same time and doing like whole takes. I remember we would just do three takes and then choose the best one and that was it. Like no editing. Um, basically what you're hearing, that's that's what it is. It's a live take. Um, and I worked with Gabe Roth. He produced it. For, you know, he's from the Dap Kings. Um, and it was an incredible experience. I had never done a record that way and it just kind of made me realize, wow, I mean, it, that's how they made records back in the day. and. They sound so flawless, and you could just tell like people were just at the top of their game back then. Um, because nowadays we're just, you know, we're so spoiled. We're like, oh yeah, fix that here, fix that there, you know, tune that here, and and um, it's it's a lost art, I think. So so it was it was great to you know just 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 do it as a concept for that album. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna do all my records that way, <laughs> but um, it was it was definitely a, a great experience. I believe you're a few months away from releasing a new album. Can you tell me about that? Yes, um, it's a it's a collaboration with a legendary musician named Van Dyke Parks, and he and I have been talking about this project for about ten years, <laughs> and it's finally coming out uh, in May, and it's called Spangled, and what it is is a collection of songs that he and I chose uh, from different parts of Latin America and from North America. I'm singing in three different languages, in Portuguese, Spanish, and English, and they're all with his beautiful arrangement. So it's all done to like um, orchestra arrangements, and I've never done a record like that. So, so it's, it's gonna be, when people hear it, and, and if you're familiar with my music, they're gonna be like, wow, this is like <laughs> another world. But uh, yeah, I'm very honored to have worked with him. Um, you're starting the Australian tour. Uh, tonight. Yeah. Um, what are your memories of your last Australian trip? Well, I was here a year and a half ago um, here in Melbourne doing a residency at Bird's Basement. Um, it was it was so much fun. I mean, we, we loved it. Uh, we had a great crowd every night and everybody was so warm and, you know, I, I think that everybody really enjoyed it. It was, it was really fun and um, it's it's amazing to be back. I just I love coming back here. 
Uh, tell me about the band that uh, are with you. Yeah, I brought um, uh, my drummer, Sebastian Islands, and my bass player, Kimon Kirk. He's from Boston, and Sebastian is from Germany, but lives in LA. We all live in LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's great to have you back in the country, and thanks yes. for chatting to us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.